know everybody, welcome to an Epic Mod and Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have your WWE Clash of Champions 2020 full show predictions. How these videos work is we're going to run through the entire WWE Clash of Champions 2020 show, breaking down all of the matchups and giving you my own personal thoughts and opinions on all of the matchups, what I think of the feuds, what I think coming in, where I think we go from here, who I think is going to win the matchup, what I expect out of the matchup, and everything like that in between. So coming into this show, I feel like we have like some bangers that I'm actually kind of excited about and then we have some matches where it's just like is it is this monday night raw is this smackdown kind of just seems like they're not as quality as other matchups and it, it's kind of crazy how many matches we have i think we have nine matches which is a lot more than you would expect out of a clash of champions show like this but we're gonna get into it there are some matches that i am looking forward to and some matches i'm not so much looking forward to which we will all break down for you guys and potentially one of these matches we could we could see a match of the year contender but quite possibly depending on you know what all they give us but anyways, guys, let's dive into Clash of Champions 2020, breaking everything down, seeing what comes of it. Usually these shows end up being better than I think they are when I'm not looking forward to them that much. So let's shut the hell up and get into the WWE Clash of Champions 2020 full show card. So starting out first, guys, we have the Women's Tag Team Championship match between Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler taking on Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan in the Riot Squad. The Riot Squad back together again, and if you guys notice, I'm missing a Women's Tag Team Championship. Uh, I think she did like a nosedive off my shelf. I looked at everywhere underneath the shelf and all around the surrounding area for the title. I don't know where the hell it went, man. It just kind of disappeared out of thin air, so I don't know. But anyways, who the hell cares? It's Nia Jax. So coming into this matchup, not looking forward to it at all, but I think we're going to get new champions. I think that Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are going to serve as transitional champions. You know, they're not really a tag team. The Riot Squad are a name that we have come to know in the women's tag team division. They were a team for a very long time, and I think that they are going to get the tag straps right here at Clash of Champions. So I'm going to go Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan to win. That way the tag team championships can actually be on a legit women's tag team. This is the whole point why the women's championships shouldn't have been made in the first place. Because you didn't have enough women to fill out your tag team division so you just started throwing random women together and that just it just doesn't work naturally. It doesn't feel natural. It's kind of forced. So for those reasons, I'm going to go with the Riot Squad. Hopefully that is the case. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax are two of my least favorite women on the roster. So for those reasons, just what everything they do just is very boring to me. I can't buy into it, so I'm going to go Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan for the win, and I need to find my Ru Liv Morgan figure, apparently, too. Jesus Christ. Next up is our Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Street Profits taking on Andrade and Angel Garza. Now, I could have swore that Andrade and Angel Garza were going to break up. Like, I could have sworn that was going to be a thing. I think the Raw Tag Team Championship picture is just depleted, guys. I mean, my God, it seems like there have been so many tag teams that have just come and gone from WWE because they refuse to really put a bunch of emphasis on the tag team division. And so their tag team divisions are just depleted right now. There are not a lot of competitors in these divisions. But besides the point, I think all four of these guys can give us a good match. We've seen all four of them in the ring together before. I'm pretty sure Angel Garza and Andrade are the ones that poisoned Montez Ford that one time, or, you know, they, they made him fall unconscious, or whatever that was in that one matchup. But for this matchup, I'm gonna have the Street Profits retain. I just don't see Angel Garza and Andrade being the ones to knock them off, especially since they've been kind of fractured. I'm gonna go with the Street Profits to retain. Hopefully, that's the case. I like them much better as a team than Andrade and Angel Garza. And, I mean, they already have the tag straps. No reason for them to lose them right here. I'm gonna go with the Street Profits to retain the Raw Tag Team Championships. And I think one day, I know this is kind of off topic, but I think Montez Ford should turn on Angelo Dawkins and go his own way one day. I think that would be absolutely fantastic for him to get a singles run as a heel. I think he would be really good in that role. Next up, we have the SmackDown side of things as far as the Tag Team Championships go. We have Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura defending their SmackDown Tag Team Championships versus the Lucha House Party in Grand Meta League, Lince Dorado or Kalisto, which it'll be and or. I guess one of them will be at ringside or, you know, all three of them aren't competing but it will be a two-on-two -two matchup. Two of these respective characters versus those two. Now, do I think this matchup is going to be pretty solid? I think so. I think all of the men in the ring, whoever competes in this matchup for the Lucha House Party will tear it down with Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro. I think that all these styles will fit very nicely together. You have the very physical and hard-hitting style of Shinsuke and Cesaro taking on the Lucha House Party where you got your luchadors and your high flyers. I think it could make for a pretty interesting matchup, so I kind of am looking forward to it. But as far as prestige and, you know, uh, just kind of the hype around the match, not that big, but I think the in-ring work will be quality, which is kind of weird to look at it, but, you know. But I'm going to go with Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro to retain. I don't think they need to drop their tag team championships, especially the Lucha House Party at this juncture. I kind of enjoy 
enjoy their work as a team. I think their chemistry is kind of underrated here. So I'm going to go with Cesaro and Shinsuke to retain, and I think that's the best move for the division right now. Next up is our United States Championship rematch here between Bobby Lashley defending against Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews is, of course, the former United States Champion, and you know the Hurt Business is going to be in full force. MVP, Shelton Benjamin, the newly turned heel, Cedric Alexander, that I did pitch that idea earlier on months ago. So it's nice to see what I fantasy booked and what I kind of pitched come to fruition here with Cedric Alexander. Hopefully this can add some depth to his character, get him on TV a little bit more, have him grow as a character, and eventually, you know, take over here because he's actually the, the much younger buck compared to the rest of the Hurt Business, and I think he has a bright future. You guys know I'm a big Cedric Alexander guy. But for this matchup, I think Bobby Lashley is going to win. I think Apollo Crews will stay where he is right now because, you know, I was so high on him. That's why I wanted him to retain in the first matchup. I don't think it would be a lot of sense or it wouldn't make the Hurt Business look too good if they were to flip-flop the title right here back to Apollo Crews, and I think it's time for this feud to end. I think Apollo Crews' time in the sun is going to come to an end. You know, I didn't want it to come to an end whatsoever. I thought that it was great for him to be champion. I wanted him to retain against Bobby Lashley the last time they faced. That did not take place, so that, therefore, moving forward, I think that Apollo Crews is probably going to go down from here. I don't know where he can go because after having the U.S. Championship and then, you know, looking great with it, he was winning matches, and now that he's lost it, I don't know where he goes from here. I thought it, what he was doing was fine, but now that we have the Hurt Business and you got Cedric and you got all this running rampant, I think that Bobby Lashley will retain, and that is unfortunate for Apollo, but that is just what my prediction is for this matchup at Clash of Champions. Next up, we have the first of our two women's championship matches. We have Asuka defending the Raw Women's Championship against Zelina Vega, and this one is one I'm not looking forward to. I don't see Zelina Vega in the same light as Asuka. If you guys get what I'm saying, Asuka has all of these career accolades. She has built up quite the reputation in WWE. I think she's actually the best overall women's talent. I think she's that damn good in the ring. She's probably one of the best women female performers in the entire world, and so I just do not see Zelina Vega doing that. I think Vega is a great promo. I think that she is improved in the ring. I think she's getting better every time, but I just don't see her competing with Asuka, and this matchup should honestly probably be a squash matchup in that regard, because Asuka is so highly noted. I mean, she's women's Royal Rumble winner and Money in the Bank, multiple time champion, undefeated for a long time, long reigning women's NXT champion. I mean, this the, these careers do not match up, in my personal opinion. If you were to compare it, I would say it's much, it'd be kind of like Randy Orton going up with, like, Mojo Rawley kinda. I, I don't know. I like Vegas Vega in her role. I think she's a fantastic manager, but I do not see her competing with Asuka, so I'm going to go Asuka for the win to retain. That's the only thing that makes sense. I don't see it going any other way, so Asuka for the win. And on the flip side, guys, we have this SmackDown Women's Championship match between Bayley and Nikki Cross, a matchup that is not fresh for us. We have seen this matchup before. I feel like I've seen this matchup a hundred million times, whether it's between Bayley and Sasha taking on Nikki and Bliss, or you have Bayley versus Cross, or, or any of those, you know, different matchups that you could see. I feel like we have seen this matchup so so many times before, and since the storyline is Sasha Banks and Bayley, I do not see Nikki Cross getting a win here. I'm going to go with Bayley to retain. Again, it's the only thing that makes sense. I think both women's championship, actually every women's championship match at this show is just kind of lackluster and something I'm not much looking forward to at all, but maybe they'll shock me. You know, I just, I think it's because I've seen it so many times, and because the visions are so thin, and we keep getting rematches and rematches that it's just like, ah. I know Vega and Asuka are fresh, but that's still not uh, you know, a matchup that I really want to see. And so I'm just going to go Bailey over Nikki Cross here. It's the only thing that makes sense. And yeah, that, that's about it. Next up, guys, is the matchup that I'm most looking forward to. The triple threat ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship. Jeff Hardy versus Sami Zayn versus AJ Styles. Woo boy! I am looking forward to this one. I am definitely excited for this matchup. No ifs, ands, or buts. This is the matchup I'm most looking forward to. I guess it's pretty obvious. Anytime you have a ladder match, anytime you have Jeff Hardy in a ladder match, and then you, you throw in Sami Zayn and AJ Styles, I mean my God, Brad. This looks like some pick-fed fantasy booking type stuff that I'm absolutely 110% for, and I'm hyped, man. I'm definitely hyped. I think overall, as far as my predictions, man, I think that we have a banger on our hands. If you guys know the past of Sami Zayn, the Ladder Wars matchup this guy had on the Indies with Kevin Steen, Kevin Owens now, and you know the former Money in the Banks and the stuff we've seen from TNA from AJ Styles and the high-flying ability that we used to see from the guy. And don't forget about the Ladder Match classics he had with Dean Ambrose. And then 
into it, even need to get into what we've seen from Jeff Hardy over his career in ladder matches. This has the makings to be absolutely fantastic. And also, a WrestleMania 32, should I forget the Intercontinental Championship ladder match from WrestleMania 32 with Sami Zayn? I miss babyface Sami Zayn, guys. I mean, my God, he was freaking, he, he was amazing. But getting into this matchup, I think I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy to win. I know he re-signed with the company. I'm pretty sure he signed a new contract because he wanted no more words. That was like kind of the stipulation here. Maybe he'll break it out for this matchup. I think he's waiting until crowds come back to actually break that theme back out. But man, am I hyped for this one. I just want a damn good match. I hope it lives up to the hype. I hope it lives up to what we're expecting in our brains. So I'm going to go with Jeff Hardy to retain the Intercontinental Championship. I just want a high flyer. I want a damn good football game. And I wouldn't be shocked if somebody else won this matchup. I just want Jeff to, I just want Jeff to retain. And so I guess we're just going to see, man. But I am super hyped for this matchup. And I don't know how you couldn't be with all this talent and the stipulation and everything. But Jeff Hardy for the win. Let's find out if he can get it done. Next up is the Blue Universal Championship match. Roman Reigns defending with Paul Heyman against Jay Uso. Very interesting matchup coming in here. A lot of people are saying, you know, universe mode in 2K because Jay Uso getting a Universal Championship match here on pay-per-view versus Roman Reigns. And I think this matchup, there, I fantasy booked this actually yesterday. If you checked out yesterday's video, guys, definitely go check that out if you missed it. But I fantasy booked Clash of Champions 2020. And in my fantasy booking, I said that Roman Reigns needs to dominate. And by that, I think he needs to. And I'm going to predict that he does win the matchup, no doubt. There's no reason that he should not win. That is 100% fact that he should win. We're just getting started on this Roman Reigns reign of terror, I think. And I'm actually all here for it. I'm not saying reign of terror in a bad way. I'm saying reign of terror as in dominating because I think he should dominate Jey Uso, man. The look he gave this man on Friday Night Smackdown the other night when they tag team together and then they hugged and then Jey Uso walked off. Roman Reigns needs to dominate Jey Uso and he needs to put him in his place. He needs to show off what he can do with Paul Heyman, show the dominance of this of this duo that we got going on. And I think that is what we're going to get. I'm going Roman Reigns 100% over Jey Uso. I hope that he brings the power. I hope that we get some good stuff. Apparently, he's going to be wrestling shirtless. And apparently, he's going to have new music. And I'm all here for it, man. I'm super hyped to see what we get from him. It should be very entertaining. I can't wait. Let's see what we get with his theme music. Let's see what we get with a new look. And I'm hyped, man. But I'm going to go Roman Reigns to retain. Shouldn't go any other way. Let's dominate Jey Uso. And for the main event, guys, we have the Ambulance WWE Championship match between Randy Orton taking on Drew McIntyre, a matchup that we have seen before. You guys know that Randy Orton took out Drew McIntyre. He had his matchup with Keith Lee. Keith Lee kind of disposed of him real quick-like. Now we have Drew McIntyre taking on Randy Orton again in an ambulance match at Clash of Champions. And I don't know why, but I do not see this matchup come to an end. I bet they're going to pull some no contest BS or retribution or whatever the hell they're called now. They are going to get involved in this match. You have your three leaders or whatever the hell you want to call them. You got Mace, you got T-Boy, you got Slapjack, which are for, it, did you, what, what kind of names are these? I will be honest with you, you know, I mean, they definitely have a different look. I mean, we've seen things similar to them in the past, but I think we're going to get a retribution sort of invasion where they just beat the hell out of both guys and they take over the show and the show's going to end with madness, with retribution. I could see Roman Reigns and Jey Uso finishing off the night if, you know, they, they don't end up interfering. But if they end up interfering, this is definitely going to be the main event. And since it is a stipulation matchup, I just seeing that I see this being the main event. But overall, I think Drew McIntyre is going to retain. If this matchup actually goes to finish, I am going to go Drew McIntyre to retain. I just don't see Randy winning it unless he's going to be a transitional champion. But I don't think Drew McIntyre is going to drop the championship until we get back to crowds, which I've been stating all year long. Since he won the championship, I've been stating that I think he will hold it until we get full crowds back. So I'm going to stick to that sentiment. Even though it'd be cool to see Randy Orton win here, I just don't see it happening. Again, unless it's going to be transitional effort where it's just going to be he gets the championship and then two weeks later he drops it to somebody else. But I think we're going to have Retribution interfere. I'm going to go with Retribution interfering, leading to no DQ, bunch of madness, just a bunch of stuff destroyed. I, I wouldn't even put it past WWE to have an ambulance that they tear apart like the slambulance that you see. Ripping the doors off, breaking the roof, breaking the sides, breaking off the wheel, just beating the hell out of this thing, breaking off the doors. I would not be shocked if that happened. Retribution you know, interferes, beats the hell out of everybody, Nexus style, tears apart the slambulance. Oh my god. God, man, I feel like that's going to happen. That's what I'm going to predict. I'm going to predict it happening. If it doesn't happen, Drew McIntyre will retain the WWE Championship. But I think that's going to do it for my WWE Clash of Champions 2020 predictions. I hope you guys did enjoy. I would love to know all of your predictions down in the comment section below. If we get any matchups added to this card, I don't think we're going to. But if we do, I will add my predictions down below in a pinned comment for you to check out. I believe that is going to do it, guys. Remember to use code 
MD Toys if you're buying anything from ringsidecollectibles.com, wrestlingfigures.com. Pick up all your WWE figures, accessories, play sets, all of that ish down there using promo code MD Toys to save some money. I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.